So here we've now put water inside of our vacuum chamber. So what I've done here is just put a little glass of water here, thermometer. I've also put the balloon in there so we can see the pressure correlation. And the water is at 101.7 degrees Fahrenheit. So we've now sealed off our vacuum paint chamber and we're going to turn on our pump. So now our pressure is dropping. We can see the balloon starting to inflate. So we know that we're having a pressure difference. And the other thing that we can see happen is the water. The water is boiling. The water is actually violently boiling and the steam from the water is fogging up the top of our case. So we're having a hard time seeing what's happening, but we can definitely see that the water is in effect boiling, which means it is changing state from a liquid to a vapor, which means anytime a substance, any substance changes state from a liquid to a vapor, it absorbs heat. And boiling is what kind of effect? Say it with me. Boiling is a cooling effect. So the water should be cooling off because it's a cooling effect. And if we see the temperature of our water is now dropping, it's at 91.6, 91.4, 91.0 90.9 you can see the temperature of the water is dropping because it's boiling it's changing state from liquid to vapor it is absorbing heat and it's absorbing heat from itself so its temperature is without a doubt dropping we're now at 88 degrees fahrenheit the longer that we run this the lower our temperature is going to drop to and eventually we'll actually boil all of that water out of this chamber we can remove it all just simply by having it boiling now, if you notice, it's boiling at 84 degrees Fahrenheit. 84 degrees Fahrenheit, it is boiling. Water's boiling. You're seeing it happen right here with me. No special effects. It's just simply water boiling. So let's think about what does that mean? Does that mean that the water is hot or the water is cool? And it's a trick question because I don't want you thinking about hot or cold. So you got to think about is the water warmer than or cooler than? And the water is actually warmer than its boiling point. So there's a little catch here. According to you and your feelings, it's going to feel cool. It's only at 81 degrees, so it's lower than your body temperature. But according to the water, it is without a doubt for sure hot, and that's why it's boiling. So somebody always asks the same question. Well, if you put your ramen noodles in the water, would it cook it? And the answer is no, it would not. Because you can see right now the temperature is say uh, 79.3 degrees Fahrenheit. So can you cook ramen noodles at 79 degrees Fahrenheit? And the answer is unlikely. It would, it would just be wet, soggy ramen. So what we're gonna do is put the air pressure back in. You can also see that our boiling effect has stopped. And now when I touch the water, it feels significantly cooler. And our water level is lower as well. So this is boiling. The point of this, what I want you to really get out of this is to think that boiling is a cooling effect, number one. But number two, I can control boiling by controlling the pressure. I'm gonna say that again. I can control the boiling point by controlling the pressure. So I can control the temperature at which this water boils by controlling the pressure. If I drop the pressure, I drop the boiling temperature of this water and the water boils at a much cooler temperature. Now we can't cook food at that lower temperature because we don't have as much heat involved. This is also popular when you're thinking about a place such as Denver, Colorado. It's much higher in elevation. So that means there's much less cubic feet of air on top of us. So water will boil at a much lower temperature. So because water boils at a lower temperature, it's going to take longer to cook the food. It's no longer boiling at 212. It's boiling at, say, I'm just going to throw a number out. I haven't looked it up. Let's say it's boiling at 200 degrees. That's 12 degrees less heat going into the food. So to make up for that, you have to cook it for a longer time. If you're reading directions on many different recipes, you'll see that the cooking time is longer at higher elevations because altitude and pressure affect that boiling point. Now also there's a difference between boiling and evaporation. Here we got to actually see boiling take place as well as we, as well as we did in an earlier video. But also let's think about evaporation. If I was to put this water on me 
that water would evaporate. It's actually evaporating right now due to the humidity. But if I spread the water out across my arm, now there's more air touching more of the water, it's going to speed up evaporation. Better yet, if I put a fan on me, that's going to cool it off even faster. Let's apply this to your day-to-day -day life. Let's say you get out of the shower, you dry off with a towel. The towel is now wet. If you leave that towel crumpled off into the corner, it's going to take a very long time to dry out. If it ever does, it'll probably mildew before that. But if you spread it out across the towel rack, there's now a whole lot of air touching a whole lot of that moisture and it speeds up evaporation. You can, you can increase that even more if you put a fan on it and then you can increase the amount of air touching the water and it'll dry out even faster. Also think about when you go swimming, you have, uh, say you have a t-shirt on, you jump into the water, you feel good, you get out of the water.